Hey everyone, my name is Jessie Rack and I am an ecologist, an Arizona master naturalist, and an environmental educator with the U of A. Um, and my job in the before times was to go around to different schools and different classrooms and work with students to learn to do science outside, kind of in their gardens and their outdoor spaces. Um, that not being exactly possible at this moment in history, I'm going to do a series of sort of remotely guided assignments where you can follow along in your own space um, on your own time and then maybe we can discuss later. So this way it can be convenient kind of for everyone. So I hope you'll come along with me. Uh, a little bit of background about myself quickly. So I didn't know I wanted to be a scientist. I started out as a music major with a creative writing minor, which I still really love those things. I ended up changing to biology, and then I got a PhD in ecology and evolutionary biology from the University of Connecticut. So I was an East Coaster until like two years ago. Um, and I studied for that, I studied salamanders, which we can talk more about. Ask me anything about salamanders. I may not know it, but it'll be fun. Um, so I studied salamanders, which are a kind of amphibians, which Arizona has very few of, incidentally. Um, not amphibians, but salamanders specifically. Um, so yeah, so after that, I kind of embarked on this twisty journey, and here I am uh, doing all kinds of nature stuff and science stuff in the desert. So I would love to share some of that with you. Um, for now, let's get started on our first assignment. Okay, so introductory assignment number one. Um, we're going to work on doing some scientific observations, um, and we're going to do that through nature journaling. So here, I want you to pause the video, or I want you to take a moment and stop and think about two of the things I just said, okay? Number one is observations. I want you to think about what do I mean by observation? Like, what does it bring to mind when I say observation? Uh, how does it happen? And why is it important? And number two, I want you to think about what do I mean by nature? Okay, so pause right here. Uh, okay, great, cool. So I hope you had a moment to think about that or write about that or however you process information. So thing number one, um, what do I mean by observation, right? So a lot of times when you say observation, students will think, oh, looking at something, right? Right, did you? And that's fine, that is part of it for sure. Um, but there's other parts too. So observation in the scientific sense means kind of using all of your senses, bringing all your senses to play in learning about the world around you. So yes, eyes. Also, you can use your nose. You can record sensory observations with, that you smell or things that you hear. Uh, you could use your sense of touch, certainly. Um, even your sense of taste to do it wisely. Um, for instance, I know a lot of geologists will actually lick rocks in order to identify them. Don't recommend it for plants and animals. It's not, it's just not a good idea. But rocks, you know, you do you. It's awesome. Um, so observation, bringing all your senses into play to learn about the world. And this is important because I'm sure, hopefully, you've learned or heard about the scientific method at some point, right? So scientific method is where you do, um, what is it, ask a question, make a hypothesis, yada, 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 right, right, right? So that's cool and it's true, but how can you start to form questions or even make a hypothesis, right? So a, a strong educated guess about what you're seeing or what you think will happen without first understanding the system and having a chance to really sit down and kind of immerse yourself in it and just like kind of vibe with it, you know? So yeah, that's what we're doing. Observation is just like science vibing. Um, cool. So my second question was, what do I mean by nature? Okay, so does nature just mean like pristine wilderness, like the top of a mountain in Alaska and all you can see for miles is like caribou and polar bears and stuff? No, that quick answer, no. Um, so nature can be anything, right? So it can mean uh, your school garden. It can mean the plants in your neighborhood. It can mean your backyard. It can mean, I don't know, like, um, 
your parks. It can mean all kinds of different things. Um, and so taking some time to do nature observation, nature journaling is just a way of learning about the world around you. That's what I'm hoping for here. So also don't get scared off if like nature journal sounds like kind of not scientific because it totally is. And as I've mentioned, it's kind of a way into these scientific skill sets that you'll be de developing. Okay. So, so materials, all you need for today is a journal of some sort, something to write down your observations in. Um, and then, you know, a pen or a pencil. That's like your baseline, the things you need. Uh, if you'd like to upgrade, you're welcome to do that. You can bring some um, colored pencils or some markers. If you want to add some color, if you're really into that stuff, go to town. Um, but these are the very basic things. So perhaps you have a science journal that's kind of designated for this and you can find a region in it to start. Um, perhaps you want to start your own um, special like science observation journal. That'd be real cool. If you have one already like this that started for something else, here's a quick, uh, a quick uh, life hack. You ready for it? Okay. Boo! There it is. Um, so you could flip it over and put a sticker on it or something that says like science journal and then start from the back. Ta-da. Cool. Um, so journal and something to write with and something to color with if you feel like it. Okay. All right. So quickly, here are your instructions. Um, I'm going to tell you what you're going to observing. I've told you why we're observing something. Um, and we're going to start with a practice observation. And I'll tell you what types of things you can observe, but really you can choose whatever you want. Um, and then I'm going to give you kind of three rules for observation. And I'll write them up here too, so you can see uh, and pause it and write them down. Um, so first of all, all we're going to be doing today is an observation about a small part of nature. Um, if perhaps the weather is not temperate where you live, perhaps it's a million bazillion degrees like the surface of the sun, you might not want to sit outside for very long and do your observation. Of course, you're welcome to do that if you bring lots of water and are prepared for whatever the elements have in store. Um, but really um, it's totally okay to just grab something from outside that you'd like to observe and bring it into you so for that i'd like you to go outside spend some time out there um, you can do it at a a nice uh, temperate time of day whatever that is for you um, and just go out there and grab something that you want to observe more closely it can be a leaf it could be a flower or a fruit it could be I don't know maybe you can catch a little bug or something as long as you release it where you found it um, just any kind of thing that you can observe a rock I don't know um, alternatively if you do choose to go outside and sit and observe something for a while I recommend at least like 15 to 20 minutes um, um, then you might want to choose something like, I don't know, an anthill or a tree or um, a crack in the sidewalk. I don't know. Um, whatever you choose, just make sure you're safe, make sure the area is safe and you're prepared to be there for a little while. Um, so that's step one. You're finding something you want to observe. Um, so for me, I have a lot of like nature things. I'll show you at the end my examples in my journal. Um, but uh, for instance, I brought in, oh, it's over there. I brought in um, some cool rocks. I brought in like a piece of a saguaro boot. Um, I have all kinds of things lying around. So I'm going to choose one of them and do an observation along with you. So that's step one. Step number two. Um, so there are three things that I want you to include in your journal. And so every good journal entry, nature journaling entry, should um, include three of these things in whatever proportion you want them to be. Okay, so they should be number one, words, number two, uh, pictures, and number three, numbers. Okay, uh, and I'll write them right here. <laughs> um, so if you're most comfortable describing things in words, cool, 
do the most of that, but please also include the other two things. And your teacher and I will want to see the things you come up with. If you're more comfortable with pictures, go to town, please. Like do a nice, like very detailed scientific illustration to the best of your abilities, color it in, do whatever you want, but make sure you're also including things like numbers and words. And finally, if numbers are your jam, like that's awesome. Do some measurements. You can do like volume measurements, like do whatever you want, but also the pictures and words thing should all be there. Um, a note on pictures. I myself am not an artist by any stretch of the word. Um, and that's not what it's about. It's not about making a pretty picture. In, in fact, if you're spending too much time trying to make it pretty and artsy, you're probably going the wrong direction with it because this is supposed to be something accurate um, and something kind of descriptive. So if you start to feel the pressure while you're drawing to make something a pretty picture, then try to stop yourself and try to make it a diagram instead. That's what I do. So if I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm terrible at drawing. Instead, I start adding labels and adding measurements and do a lot of like lines out where I like describe things. Um, and that kind of stops me. So hopefully that will work for you as well. Okay. So you're going to include in your drawing and your, your, um, your entry of your nature journal, a picture, a words, not just one word, probably many words, several words, uh, and some numbers. So I want you to just take some time sitting down with the object, whatever you choose, and writing down those three things. A final note, it's always a good idea. I probably should have said this at the beginning of the part, but whatever, you, you're here now. Um, so it's always a good idea to enter the date to enter the location where you are and to enter the weather, like what it's like, because this can affect whatever part in nature you're observing. Okay, cool. Um, so that's it for today. We're going to go more in depth with this stuff later on, but that's where I'd like you to start is just doing one sample observation. Um, and it's going to be really fun. I hope, I hope this gets you um, out into the world, find something cool you want to think more about, and we'll do more with this stuff later. Okay. So thanks for playing. You can do it and it's definitely worth it. It's going to be worth it. Thanks guys. So this is going to be pretty small on your screen, but I'll try to talk through the parts and I will include also a, um, a link to the actual photo so you can actually zoom in and look at all the parts. We'll start at the top here. So you can see in the top right that I have included the date, the location, and the weather. Um, hot and sunny, Tucson, Arizona. Um, I've also noted at the top left there that I've included all three items that I wanted to include. So I've included both the picture and numbers and words. Um, beneath this, you can see I have the diagram. Um, and mine is a weird seed pot I found. It's called a scrubing mesquite. Maybe you've seen them around town. Um, and so I've drawn it to the best of my abilities, which is, you know, whatever. Um, and I've also labeled the parts and I've asked little questions in the margin and I've included some measurements as well. And you can see down below in the second half that I've written out this description, which also includes some numbers and words. Um, and I've also included multiple senses. So I noticed that it, apart from this being really weird looking, it also smells really sweet. And so that led me to some questions and it led me to some sort of guesses about what the answers to those questions were. These parts aren't required for you yet, unless you really want to. Um, but just FYI, that's where we're going next. So if you want to practice with it now, go to town. Okay, that's all. I'll include this as a link. Thanks, guys.